Welcome! This video covers the process I used for a Trump Loy wood panel I made for my union entrance exam. First, I mixed all the colors I thought I would need based on the reference photo I printed. The exact colors of the base paints didn't need to be too specific because all the heavy lifting would be done by the undertone glazes to get the colors right. I made two wood grain colors for variety and an overall glaze to tone everything down to the right color. I also needed a darkening glaze to be used here and there as needed. Then I mixed three glaze colors for the lighter wood inlay. I tested out my colors on a sample board to make sure they matched the photo, and I realized that I would need a second overall glaze to tone down the strength of the orange, so I used a very small amount of purple in a glaze. So to start, I marked the inlay with Sharpie and basted it in with a lighter version of base 1. The Sharpie allowed me to be messy without losing the lines because Sharpie will come through a layer or two of paint. After it dried, I masked off the inlay with tape. A little tip to get sharp tape edges is to tear against the edge of a card or a putty knife. Taping a curve can be tedious, but I find it easiest to use one continuous piece of tape and make the outside of the curve as nice as possible. The inside of the curve will have all the excess tape, which you can flatten as best you can, and then go back in with pieces of tape to fill in the gaps. Then I carefully burnished the tape with a card to make sure the tape would stick and paint would not leak under. Then I started basing in the rest of the wood with my two base colors. I scumbled them directionally based on the direction the wood grain would go in. Once dry, I applied the three undertone glazes with some water to help it flow better. I scumbled them on with a chip brush based on the undertones I could see in the reference photo. The great thing about using a chip brush for a step like this is it creates a subtle wood grain, which will add more depth to the finished faux wood. Because of this, you naturally will want to apply the glazes in the direction of the wood grain. Once that dried, I applied my two wood grain colors with a small fitch brush and some water. Because I was trying to very specifically replicate the wood in the reference photo, I took my time and marked in the big grains and heart grain pattern. I started with the lighter grain color and later used the dark one to emphasize the grain in some places. Once the big shapes were in, I barely dipped the tip of a chip brush in the paint and dragged it across for more general wood graining. It is important to have your paint at the right consistency so it flows well, and to make sure you are consistent in the amount of pressure you use as you pull it across the surface. Once I felt good about the lighter grain, I picked through it again with a darker grain color to emphasize some areas. For the outer edges, I taped the molding before doing the wood grain so that they would have crisp and clear edges and look like separate pieces of wood. And then I used the same process as before, relying heavily on the reference photo for where to put the grain. Next I applied the purple overall glaze, which darkened the overall color toned down the oranginess of it all, and added more depth. Once that dried, I applied the overall glaze and the darkening glaze based on the reference photo. Once the first pass dried, I carefully applied more here and there, again based on the reference photo. I also used the glazes to emphasize the grain even more in some areas that seemed like it needed it. I took a lot more care with this project than I normally would because the samples the union wants you to make for your entrance exam are supposed to be your best work and high quality. 
We don't usually have this much time in theater to fuss and finesse with so many steps and colors. Next came the most satisfying part, pulling up the tape. For the center detail, I already had a print that was the right size, but without that I would have drawn it on paper first. I transferred the design with white transfer paper, which works by pressure as you trace on top of it, so I usually use a mechanical pencil with the lead pushed in. Then I basted in the design with the same color as the rest of the inlay and did a couple coats to cover the dark paint underneath. Next, I brought out the three inlay glazes I made and used a detail brush to lay in the colors based on what it looked like in the reference photo. To keep the angle of the grain consistent, I gave myself a few reference marks so that I wouldn't accidentally change the angle throughout. At first, I didn't use any tape to mask the long edges because that seemed overly tedious and I thought paint would still seep under anyways, but I did start using tape on one edge so that I could start each brush stroke on the tape and pull off of it. That way there was one easy clean edge and I continued to just be careful on the opposite side. Once I finished the inlay, I used a straight edge and an angled brush for the gold border around the inlay. I mixed the yellow base with the darkest inlay glaze color. The base color on its own would have been too hot and punchy, so the mix made it blend in better with the rest of the wood. When using a straight edge, be sure to wipe the edge so that any paint that gets under it doesn't mess up your next line. To get a good line, you should use a brush that can hold enough paint to pull a long line. You don't want to have to repeatedly reload the brush with paint if you can avoid it. The line will be cleaner and smoother that way. For the circle, I did switch to a smaller brush because it was easier than the angled brush for the curve. The final detail was the trompe l'oeil, so I taped the edges of the molding to make sure it would have a crisp line, marked in the molding with pencil, and started with the shade. I used the darkest glaze from earlier, which did mean that I had to do a few layers to achieve the darkest areas of the shade. For the curved molding, I applied a bit of water first, before the shade color then used the water brush again to feather out the edge. Then I switched to the highlight, which was the base color again, toned down with one of the orangey glazes. Most of the highlights were crisp lines, but on the curved molding detail there was a fuzzy highlight which was also done by applying water first, then the paint, then using the water brush to fade it out. And voila! The illusion of dimension. I repeated the same thing on all four sides, taking into account the direction the light was coming from. The light in the reference image was pretty subtle and didn't have a strong direction to it, but I generally thought of it as coming from the upper left. Once it was fully complete, I sealed the whole thing with a semi-gloss sealer and a nice smooth brush. As I mentioned at the beginning, this wood sample was for my union exam, so I took a lot more time and care with it than we usually can do in theater, but understanding this process is helpful to then simplify down for something suitable for theater. It's really rewarding when you have the opportunity to do a beautiful wood like this, and for me it did pay off because I was accepted into the union. <laughs>